The last time Chronicle ventured into a show on surveillance was in 1996, long before the technology of today. The most dangerous thing that I see going on in the area of privacy right now are, are the discount cards for supermarkets. Those cards are going to keep a constant record when I go to that supermarket of uh, you know, what kind of orange juice I drink, how often I drink it. If only we could see into the future. These membership cards, once seen as an invasive tracking tool, are almost archaic when you consider something far more insidious, and it's probably in your pocket. Your cell phone is likely tracking your every move. We use them to find our way, take pictures, communicate, play games. Our cell phones help us keep track of our lives, and third parties keep track of us. Our metadata, which often is more revealing than the content of a communication because it shows how often we communicate with whom, where we are physically located. When you piece them all together, can paint a picture of someone that is even more detailed and accurate than someone may even know about themselves. Kate Crockford with the ACLU agreed to take a look at my phone to figure out how I'm giving my story away. We thought it would be a process. Turns out a couple of clicks, less than 10 seconds, and a complete detailed log of my digital footprint nearly everywhere I have been in the last month is revealed, right down to the time. But Crockford points out it's not as much the device as the apps. A lot of these apps are kind of the flavor of the week. You know, we've seen like, you know, make your face into cute dog ears or whatever. Take a picture of yourself and it tells you how old it thinks you are. These are actually designed to harvest personal information. <laughs> and bytes of our data, which are then packaged and sold. What's more, data can be stored almost indefinitely. In the late 1960s, one megabyte hard drive cost a million dollars. Today, about two cents. Do you know where you were six weeks ago at exactly this moment? Of course you don't, but Google does. <laughs> Your cell phone company does. Google is now working with police to help solve major crimes. If you have your location services on with Google, a database called Sensor Vault provides detailed location records. Here's how it works. Say there is a serious crime on Boylston Street in Boston around 7 p.m. Google has the ability to source all devices in that area at that time and pull identification records. Think about it. There are 396 million cell phone accounts in the U.S. This helps police narrow it down to just a few options. At MIT, great minds are already working on the technology of the future. Professor Danny Weitzner is focused on how privacy might play into it. I don't worry about the idea that institutions have information about me. I worry that there are no controls on what they can do with it. And I worry that we haven't defined lines clearly enough that say if you cross this boundary, you're breaking the law. And individuals shouldn't feel overwhelmed by, you know, check boxes and OK buttons and this, that, and the other thing that we're constantly getting confronted with that we mostly don't understand. With no clear laws governing private companies, MIT came up with an idea. Partner future innovators with future legal interpreters at Georgetown University. When we started teaching it, we thought what we were teaching was about privacy, law, and technology. What we learned is that we're actually teaching lawyers and computer scientists how to work together. And every year, there's at least one group of students who almost come to blows because they, they, they're so exasperated at the difference in the way that they understand the world. An ethical exploration ahead of unexplored territory to prevent data surveillance from having a chilling effect on human behavior. If we can do that, I think we can live happily in this very information-rich environment. If we don't do that right, we end up um, making lots of people feel one notch too nervous, one notch too cautious, one notch too quiet, and then we've changed the character of our society, and I don't think we want to do that. Okay, raise your hand, unfortunately me, if you <laughs> use that face app to find out what you'll look like in a couple of decades. Did you do it? I didn't. Um, I actually looked into it a little bit, and I mm -hmm. found out that it was this Russian company, and they're collecting all this data on you, and you're signing licenses away, and I said, not for me. Yeah, as if that isn't scary enough to find out what you look like at 80, at least for <laughs> me. 
we found out they have access now to our iCloud pictures. So right. a big and, deal. And we're giving all this data away with our own consent. Every time we bring down an app and we just whip through those forms and said agree, 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 we're mm. voluntarily giving this away. At this point, you likely have a lot of questions and Nicole asks the big one. <laughs>